Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now, here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Welcome back to the How to Barbecue Right podcast. I'm your host, Malcolm Reed, joined by my lovely, talented, the brains of the whole operation, Miss Southern Shell. Shell. Thanks, Mal. We're still, sucking up. Still quarantined up. <laughs> it's tough. It gets tougher it is. and tougher. These walls keep closing <laughs> in on us, don't they? At least we get to go outside and do some filming and cooking and get our mind off stuff. It really is helping us. Yeah. And, I will say that. Oh, there's some people, you know, they can't do their job at all. Yeah, I know. We get to double down on ours. Well, as long as we got meat to cook, that's been the, <laughs> running out of things. <laughs> I did me a Kroger. I did me a super low Malcolm click has list been today. Freaking out about the idea that he can't get meat. He can't go shopping for meat. I, stores don't have meat. It's bad. It's bad. I I have I had I never thought that I had a problem. We have a freezer full of meat. But I have to <laughs> go walk through the aisles of the store and go to the meat departments and look at the meat. I don't care if I don't buy something. It's something that I need to do. It's like therapeutic. It is therapeutic, and I'm not getting I to can't. do it. It's driving me crazy. It's, it really is, and it makes me sad. Like the times I did go in, everything's empty. Yeah, I mean it's apocalyptic. It's, I, I hate it. I hate it. I mean it's okay. You know, you can order stuff and have it shipped to you and all that, but it's just not the same as getting to go to the store. I'm t- we take stuff for granted that we're not getting to do, and I know that everybody's got to stay home. We got to, you know, wake this virus out. But man, it's driving me crazy. It really is. I'm glad I got this podcast to vent on. <laughs> okay, nobody wants to hear you, Benton. <laughs> so um, let's just jump right in and talk about our recipe this week. Sure. Well, Malcolm style ribs. I picked up, this was before quarantine, <laughs> BQ. <laughs> it was BQ. We no, were. Uh, this is actually right about the time that we thought we might be quarantined. We didn't know. We got back from going down to the beach. The beach. And you said if they have this contest in two weeks, I'm gonna have to have some ribs. I'm gonna have to have some ribs, and I, with everything that's going on, you you grabbed four slabs, I think. There were some beautiful slabs of ribs. Yeah. They were Smithfield extra tenders. I picked them up at Walmart. Do you think? It's and they funny were fresh. Now that you were worried about having the contest in two weeks. Yeah, that seems like <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. But I'm glad I had those ribs because I stuck them in the freezer once the contest started canceling, and. Um, you know, going through the freezer, I said, hey, I felt like cooking some ribs. I hadn't had it. I couldn't tell you the last time I cooked some ribs. When, but I guess it was at the a shed for the contest. Oh, yeah, yeah, We hadn't yeah. cooked them at the house in a long time. But You don't get to enjoy them at a contest, really. No. And they're comp style. They're all sweetened up. And yeah. you try to do them up for the judges. And they're good, but. These ribs. The I whole premise threw everything out the window and did them my way. Yeah. You know, the heck with everything else. I wanted some my way. Not, you know. You like them dry, of course, and then we've been doing, you know, te- Texas style. I've done all these. Other, I've done all kinds of ribs different ways. Yeah. I've did Chinese style ribs. I've done jerk style ribs, the contest ribs, baby backs, you know, Memphis hot ribs. ribs, hot ribs, Texas ribs, the whole. Kansas City ribs. This is Malcolm style. <laughs> and if you want to eat a good rib, I highly suggest you try Malcolm style. It's good. It's really because good. those ribs are phenomenal. And you know, if we're gonna do, if you were gonna do them shell way, it would just be nobody dry. cares. But yeah, at the end, instead of glazing and then putting the rub on, I'd have just put a little hot and then a little regular. No more sauce at all. No more no sauce glaze. Yeah, that'd have been the only difference. But I love the way you cooked them. Oh yeah, I mean that's I mean keeping it simple, not yes. putting too much in the wrap. You know, you can go overboard with sugars and and butters and honeys and tiger sauces or Multiple whatever rubs. yeah whatever you want to yeah Multiple layering sauces. all the different rubs in there and that's just that's for competition cooking and it works in contests because you're trying to set yourself apart a judge is taking one bite when i cook ribs for myself to eat i want to be able to eat a rack of them i want to make a meal off ribs and not just eat one and be stuffed i want to you know i want them to be delicious i want yeah. them to be tender and juicy and you know, not fall off the bone, but almost, you know, yeah, you can yeah. scare them real good. <laughs> Take that bite of them and they're ready to jump off and the bones come out clean and, but they're not dry, you know, and, and that's, yeah. that's, that's what that style. Of but they're look. not like too saucy. No. And it's also about the pit. So let me tell you about Malcolm style ribs. We've already started, but, but so my favorite style is a, a, a spare rib. I love the marbled fattiness 
of the spare ribs. I agree. It's like a good ribeye steak. Now, is there anything wrong with loin back ribs? No, they're leaner. Um, you know, they're up higher on the closer to the spine, right on that loin. That's what they call them, loin backs or baby backs. They're okay. It's just a leaner rib. It doesn't have the fat. I saw somebody say that they prefer the loin backs over the Kansas City style because of the little bones, the little cartilage at the bottom. Oh. But I love that part. I don't mind gnawing on it. I, I do too. That's got the yep. best. Oh, yeah. That's where some of that flavor and yeah. fat is. It's, I mean, it's going on down towards the belly down there. Yeah. You know, that's where it's touching that. I like brisket that bone or whatever. Yeah. But so I, I I cook the St. Louis cut spares. And you could cook whole spares, but for me, I just like the St. Louis cut. They come out perfect little pieces of bones, mow through the whole rack. <laughs> <laughs> and so all I did was take the membranes off and I needed some savory notes first. So I AP, salt, pepper, garlic. You could have just went salt, a little pepper. And a little garlic, but mine's already mixed up, and it's a great savory flavor. Yeah, hey, and you could have used any basic all purpose. Yeah, if as long as it didn't have too many other. I just like my blend. It's, it's, that's my personal blend yeah. that we use on vegetables, chicken, beef, pork, seafood, the whole nine yards. AP goes on it for savoriness. Everybody knows those flavors. I let that sweat in. Go ahead and get my cooker ready. Now, well, see, I have a question. What is the sweating process? It the sweating process. It the. The salt is the main thing that's starting to work on those on the meat itself. And what it does is it draws moisture to the surface. And as it does, the, the garlic and the pepper and some of the salt is melting into the meat and getting drawn back into the meat. It's trying to work its way in there, almost like a curing effect from salting it. That's how, you know. So are you starting the cooking process? Yeah, it really effect? is. It's starting the preservation process. Yeah. You know, that's what it's doing. And, and so it pulls out moisture. And so, you know. A lot of times in comp cooking, you'll see us use mustard or oil or something as a binder. But when you when you put some salt on it, like I did, and just let it sweat, it kind of makes its own binder. The seasoning sticks yeah. to it, and it just kind of melts in. And so that's what I did. It needs about fifteen to thirty minutes. It wouldn't hurt. In the video, you said I'm gonna let the meat sweats be the binder. They, I like that. <laughs> oh, meat sweats. <laughs> I've had them. I've had I've had that seasoning working on me. <laughs> <laughs> you never had a case of the meat sweats. <laughs> you did the day yeah. we cooked it. Yeah, heck yeah. I got the mouth got the water, and I was like Pavlov's dog. When I, <laughs> ringing that bell. I knew what time it was, Jack. You smell them onions and the hickory and cherry. So while the, while the AP is working on the ribs, yeah. um, I went ahead and fired up my drum. Now, for me, you're not going to beat that flavor. The, the drum's great for giving authentic pit barbecue flavor. Okay. It's set up with the cooking rack above the coals far enough to where when that meat starts rendering, the fat starts dripping, the juices start flowing onto those coals and it starts sizzling and mixing back with the smoke that's coming up. It's just some of, it's some of the best tasting barbecue you, ever, right. you can make. Now, yeah. the downfall is it's you can only do what you can put on a 22-inch rack. Yeah. So you're kind of limited. I mean, two or three slabs is about all I'd want to cook on one. This style. Um, now, there are some things where you can hang them and stuff, and, you know, they work. I've done some of that. But for me, cooking two racks of ribs on that drum is where it's at. Well, you put full on half the basket. Do you normally do that? Um, I normally do it when I'm cooking ribs because I like that safe zone. I like to be able to, you know, not get the bottom of the rib too done. Because to me, yeah. I want my ribs cooked even. I want the tops beautiful. I want them to have that color, that sheen, that bark look to them. But I want the bottoms to, you know, be close to the same thing. I don't want it charred up. Yeah. And a lot of times if you'll, you know, build a fire in that drum and you're letting it burn over, it's getting really hot on the bottom of those ribs. Some people flip them over. I don't like flipping my ribs, only when I wrap them. I like cooking them meat up so they're real pretty. And then when I get ready to wrap them, I flip them over. But yeah, because that's, these ribs that, that's why. So what I yeah. did, like you said, I took out a piece of aluminum foil, covered up half the basket. I lit the basket, lit the lump coal on one side, mm -hmm. the open side, dropped it down the drum, let the coals get going, and I'm kind of regulating it. I'm holding it up 275. So uh, the foil doesn't um, prohibit the heat? It doesn't prohibit, like, the, the temps? No, no. I mean, it's still running 275. Yeah. It's it's just slowing Do it down now. you have to now. add any more extra air? No, no. It doesn't. It does fine. It doesn't. I mean, it's just, it really it's just kind all. of like a heat shield Yeah. over it. If yeah. you think about it like a diverter right there. Now... On a long cook, I mean, ribs that cook so fast, I didn't even burn much coal at all. It yeah. never burns over that half. And, you know, so it's kind of, I mean, you know, I just always do this because it's, I can take that full off, shake those coals around. I put the, I put that lump out. 
I can relight it and get another burn out of it, you know? Yeah. Shake the coals and dust, move them over to one side and go again. So it's just a little, I don't know, a buffer zone. It's yeah. All, it's all it's for. It's a buffer zone. And as long as you're rotating it every 30 minutes, which you, if you're cooking ribs on a drum, you're probably in it every 30 minutes anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I would say so. I mean, that's, and that's what I do. I just, when I say rotate them, I just spin the rack. Just yeah. move it to where the one rack that's over the hot coals, you just kind of turn it to where it's over, you know, the yeah. cold side. Just or rotate Not cold side, but you know what I mean, the covered side. Yeah. And I did that every 30 minutes while they're cooking. Um, I did go back, you know, after that AP rub sweat uh, sweat in, the meat sweat's got to happening. <laughs> I hit it with the barbecue rub. That's my OG seasoning. I mean, it's the one that started it all. <laughs> and you can't beat it on ribs. It puts the color on it them. It does put the color. It's got a you know a balanced flavor to where it's not too hot, not too not too spicy. Yeah, it not too salty, well not too sweet. To work with other rubs. Heck yeah, really it goes well. right with it. And when you, I mean, the star of this show is that drum with that hickory and that cherry, and then you know the savoriness of the AP and the meat dripping on those hot coals. That's what that's what that that's what the flavor the the main thing that I want to accomplish with that drum. Well, so and I think that's why drums do so well in comps. So sure. People are killing it with them. Yeah. Because judges identify that as being barbecue. Heck yeah. It just tastes good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for real. I mean, that's what it comes down to when you're judging something. Does this taste better than that? That's right. That's yeah. it. Um, so these are Malcolm style ribs. Do you always choose hickory and cherry? Is that a good combination? That's, is that your favorite? That's my favorite. That's my goat. That's what I grew up on. Hickory and cherry wood. A combo, and then, then we throw combo. we put the old Memphis touch in there, the onion, and that's something we. You know, I don't think you've ever shown that on a video. Have I not? I surely don't know. I have. Surely I have, haven't I? I don't. I can't remember. That's just if you have, it's been a while. That's hey, that's what I do. <laughs> I do it. I do it for judging. Yeah, you know, I want. I want that. If you had never smelled onions burning on your on your barbecue pit, you're missing out. And it's you can throw herbs yeah. in there. Yeah, you can put garlic, whole garlic in there. You can. Make like a little herb bundle, but the onions where it's at. It, it, you can smell that. I guarantee you, my neighbor at the end of the street was smelling. <laughs> they knew what was going Hate down. You. <laughs> Hating it, yeah. Hating this quarantine. Eric Lee always uh, says he when he smells the onions in the air, he knows he's close to a Memphis boy. I said. Because <laughs> those Memphis boys are always burning them. Yeah. But you know, if you think about it, that onion's full of moisture. You know, it's a vegetable full of moisture. It is. As it burns and that that moisture turns into gas, it's heat. And it mixes with the smoke, and it's adhering to the meat. So you're getting some flavor from it. I mean, so it's not do, overly powered onion flavor. Yeah. So you do but, feel like you get flavor oh yeah, from it. I it's not just like to enjoy it while you're. No, cooking. I definitely. I mean, <laughs> you smell it. You know, you know how yeah. good it smells. It's got to be doing something to the meat. I mean, there's no That's way around true. it. If the could wood, you tell? If nah. Yeah. But I think it helps. I think it helps. So um, you know, that'd be a good test. I've never like straight tried done it. onion only. Like coals and onion. That's it. No wood. And see what it does. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. Just to see. Yeah, that's a good yeah. idea. I'm gonna write that down. I've got me notes. <laughs> Smoke with just onion. I like you keeping notes. Um. So you use a guru on the drum. I did because I like running my gateway with one. I've never it, seen you use a guru on any other cooker. Well, it's because my adapters. <laughs> <laughs> I used to use it on my backwoods. I got my, I got a backwoods yeah. guru adapter. But my my adapter happens to be on that drum, and so, you so just leave it. well, it's either I don't know if it's going to melt the plug, so that adapter screwed in. So I could not put the guru, but then it's wide open, so I could uh, put the plastic plug in there. But then I don't know if it's going to get too hot, what do you melt like? that plug. So I just run my guru. So what's a guru? It is a pit control device, barbecue so guru. It it is regulating the temperature, regulating the airflow into the firebox. And it does this by um, connecting uh, one end of the pit. Yeah, you, you could, you, yeah. You could, the only one I run, I didn't run a meat probe. I just run the pit probe. And it connects to your thermometer. And, you you know, it's got a little digital control box. You can set it to um, whatever temp you want. I, I ran it at 275. And it gives the air, it gives proper air to the fire to stoke it. To run at two seventy, you know, whatever temp you set it, and then as the you know the fan stops or it'll pulse, and the temp will start dropping, and as it you know it'll pulse a couple more times to give it some more air. So all it's doing is controlling the airflow. So once you get your um, drum set at two seventy five, that guru just oh yeah, it's you don't do nothing. Yeah, there's no, I mean <laughs> it's, it's it's really cheating. <laughs> it really is. I don't know if it's cheating. 
yeah, I call it, yeah, it's genius, right? <laughs> yeah. Barbecue genius. I mean, you know, I don't use it all the time. I, on, the, on, the, on the gateway, I do because my adapter's on there. Yeah. It's really the main reason why I do it. I guess I could have just put the gear on there and not turned it on on the fan to block it, but. Then uh, you would have had to. Man, I'm telling regulate. y'all, that thing, that gateway with that guru runs as good as my old hickory, any pellet grill I have. It's a set and forget at that point. There's no. If I wanted to run 350, all I'd do is dial it up. <laughs> if I wanted to run 250, it dial it back. Yeah. There's no guessing, you know, and there's no fighting the fire, letting it get away from you. You can make that drum do whatever you want it to. What's the cost of a guru? I don't know. That's I've had this one. Man, I've only yeah, had, two, had I've only had two in my yeah. life, and one of them I probably bought 15 years ago, and it's still around there somewhere. Then this one I probably had since they come out with the Wi-Fi one, which is probably been five years, five or six years at least. Yeah. At least. I remember. They probably cost a couple, I don't know, 150, 200 bucks or something. I'm guessing they have different ones. And I've got the one that's a Wi Fi cyber. So, but you never connect it to your Wi Fi. <laughs> no, I don't. I get it to work. Um, <laughs> the Wi Fi stuff never works for me on grills. I don't know if I'm just not tech savvy enough or. You're fairly tech savvy. I mean, I, I think what the problem is, it's so far away from our. I need a mesh extender or something. Yeah. Every time I ask a manufacturer about it, they're like, yeah, you know. You got to be close, and you got to have such certain signals, and you know, there's something we can do about it. And I'm like, yeah, well, prove it. <laughs> I don't think it's working. <laughs> I've got four Wi-Fi grills and adapters and things, and they don't work. Well, they work. Yeah, they'll work when you're right there on it. And I want but it to they work. Don't, yeah, yeah, they don't work Wi-Fi wise. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is Malcolm Vent yeah. podcast. <laughs> so, um, so you only based it with water. I did. So I put the ribs on the rack. One over the hot side, one over the full covered side. And every 30 minutes I spun them. And then it was about the hour mark. I started hitting them with the little spritz of water just to keep some moisture on top of them to keep them from drying out too fast. And that's a lot all of people- about, that's what, that's all it's about. And I didn't need to baste them with the whole concoction and stuff or. Yeah. Everybody always wants to know what to base the ribs with, what to base the ribs with. You really just want to put some moisture on I mean, you can now. I mean, you know, in contests we make up a. Yeah. Specialized based and it's got all the you know different flavors and stuff in it and we're trying to really doctor them up. I want it to be the smoke, the meat, and the savory. Yeah. But the the water doesn't oh, it doesn't dilute it. No, it just keeps it yeah. All I'm doing is keeping some moisture on it. So it you could have sprayed on I've seen people squeeze butter on them. Yeah. I just I mean it's try the water, it works. Just a little little spritz of water. It's all they need. I was keeping, you know, my Malcolm style is simple style too. Mm-hmm. It's not a complicated recipe at all. Yeah. It's very easy, uh, very simple rib cooking to where they're just, it's just all technique and done right. See, I like the wrap. I love that wrap. Yeah, nothing, nothing in it. Nothing so, in it, just some vinegar sauce. After two, two, two and a half hours, whenever the rib, the rub gets set and the ribs have that pretty mahogany color, that's when I want to wrap them. And the wrap part is to get them tender. It's breaking down the fat. You're kind of braising them in their own juices in there. And the only thing I put in there, I skip all the, you know, the parquet, this brown sugar, honey, all that. So I skipped all that. I went with just some acidity from my vinegar sauce. It has a little sweetness to it. It has some heat to it. Yeah. And But it was about a quarter cup. I just run it down the middle of the full and then flip the ribs meat side down. I go meat side down because when you put them back in there, if you were to leave them meat side up, they're going to want to separate from the bones and kind of fall and break. But if you'll cook on meat side down, everything's cooking down and it's kind of, they're kind of locking themselves up too. And they get tender that way. And then it's yeah. also easier for me to tell the doneness because once I wrap them, they're going to need about another hour, hour and a half. I put them back on the drum and I stack them up this time. Nothing's directly over the hot, you know, the mm-hmm. direct fire side. Yeah. They're all over that aluminum full side. So it's kind of more indirect. And I stack them up after 30 minutes, I rotate them. So each one spends time on the bottom and it takes about an hour, hour and a half. Really depends um, on the ribs, right? Yeah. If you'd have gone in there at that hour mark and they wouldn't have been done, you'd have just. I'd have just yeah. Kept I, I, I wrap them to where I can get right in once the top slab real easy. I don't have to take them off the grill. I just open the ends and fold it back, and then I'm looking. If I see with the bones up like that, I can see that little you know the secondary membrane. It's always over them. Yeah. When it starts disintegrating away and those bigger wide bones on the end start popping out, and then you feel it with you can see the drawback on the edges. And then you can fill it with your thermopan, and it should be around 202 degrees is, is a perfect temp for me. But, you know, it's really by feel. You're looking for that softness. Just like brisket? Just, um, I know the tip's quite, different. Not but quite as soft as brisket. Not as quite. But you want, like, 
you know, it's all feel. It's all feel. I mean, I want it, you know, through butter, but you first you get a little bit of resistance when you first poke it in, and then go soft, and that's how you want them. Okay. It's a feel. It's a it's a feel, and you'll only get that feel by doing it a whole bunch. Yeah, learning. Yeah. And then if once you feel that, get them off. I mean, and you can also when you pick them up, how they're sagging, if they want to break. You want to get them off, and then don't mess with them for about 10, 15 minutes. Just let them sit. What does that do? Box them up. Do You let the heat out. You know, the full, you open up the full, let the heat out. The rib's going to kind of tighten up some. You know, it's been hammered with heat and wrapped up and all that steam yeah. that's built up in the full. You're letting it out, and it's kind of relaxing and tightening back up. The, the, the moisture that's all pushed to the outside is kind of drawing back in it. It's drawing itself together. And then you can handle them. And that's when I made these little full boats. Just, you know, folded up some full, made a little one-inch lip around it. And that's how, so I can pick them up without having to handle them too much. Yeah. I lay the rib on it, beat side up. And I, my, I do a, a Malcolm rib is a muddy rib. And what I mean by muddy is it has some barbecue sauce on the top, but it also has some more rub too. So it's kind of a wet meets dry yeah. together Memphis style muddy. Yeah. That's what we call it. When I first started hanging out with you and you were doing the MBN contest, that's all y'all cook. And that's what I sold to the judges. Yeah. I said, I'm, you know, this is our style rib. It's a muddy rib. Yeah. It's not a solid wet rib. It's not a, you know, a dry Memphis style rib. This is a, you know, it's our combination. We call it the muddy rib. I don't think you've ever talked about the muddy rib in a video either. I know that. But, you know, it's something I have to take for granted because a lot of times, even when we're doing comps, we finish it back with a finishing rub. And that's yeah. kind of what I was doing. I used the barbecue rub again, 50-50 the barbecue sauce, vinegar sauce. That is some such sweet, a good combination. Some tangy. You don't need anything else with it. To me, it's, that I love that combo, the vinegar and the barbecue yeah. sauce. Like that's what I want to eat. It's good. Yeah, it's good. I brushed them lightly with that. Didn't heat it up room temperature. Just sitting out there and mixed it fifty fifty. Brushed them lightly, not heavy, and then come back over it with a light sprinkle of the barbecue rub. And that's it. You can see the texture of it. Mm -hmm. Going back on the pit about ten fifteen minutes. Let that tighten up. Bring them back out and slide them off, and it's dinner time. <laughs> I know you. I could tell in that video how good those ribs were. <laughs> they were excellent. Um, I mean, they were. And I didn't eat the whole rack. I wanted to. I probably could have. But I took some to my mama. When I was editing it. My mom loved them. Yeah. She, she commented on the video. She, yeah, like, <laughs> she always does. But She wanted to know how I cooked them. She's like, what did you do to these ribs? I said, oh, yes. Not much. I ain't cooked them in a long time like that, mama. Uh, we talked about it at, when we were eating them after the video was done. Um, how... I, I thought that it would be fine to turn that into competition, maybe glaze up the back just a touch. Yeah, that's that's the one thing I would have – if I was going to turn those in, I would have hit the back before I flipped them over. Yeah. You know, I probably wouldn't have sprinkled the back, but I would at least spread Cleaned some sauce up, on the made back. It pretty. Yeah. yeah. I would have trimmed – I would have took a little more time, trimmed it a little more carefully, yeah. get, got some of the excess hanging stuff and got all that off, cleaned them up. Then maybe I not taking them as tender. Mm, no, that's where I would have wanted them. For comp? For comp. I think so. That bite was perfect. I mean, there were, I could have got eight bones out of both those racks. That's they true. Been, they would have been perfect. There was you know? one or two on the edges that was a little over. over. A little, yeah, I could see that. But uh, I would have, you know, brushed up the sides, got some sauce on the after the cuts, and they'd have been good to go. They were good. I ain't scared to run that recipe. Hey, no. I mean, simple as it is, I would run it all day long, and I'd cook them on the drum. I got a drum on my trailer. You know, I keep a drum <laughs> on my barbecue rig. That's my comp rig. I mean, I have an old hickory and I got a drum. And me and Waylon, a lot of times, we don't tell a whole lot of people, but we'll start meat on the drum. And then when it comes time to wrap, we just move it over to the old hickory and yeah. finish it off. The whole time, we're working that drum to get that true flavor. Yeah. I may bring three drums this year in the old hickory. <laughs> there might not be any this year. There might not be any this year. That's right. Those were incredibly good ribs. Yeah. When I was when I was what I was fixing to say was when I was editing the video, I was watching it and was like, God, I wish I had this one. <laughs> some more ribs because we oh, God, we did get rid of them just as fast as we put them, got got their eating what we yeah. wanted. Well, I'm trying to get rid of the bad stuff in the house. <laughs> yeah. Cook it, and get rid of it. <laughs> it's become a little bit you of. You took a the cookies though. and gave all my cookies. I made you cookies. Did you have that on there to talk about? I did. I busted up my baking skills. I bet y'all didn't know I could cook cookies. Neither you didn't did know you could cook cookies. First time ever from scratch. I googled a uh, chocolate chip cookie recipe. First one come up. And went you just went it. with it. Went to my. It was good. They were very good. That's why I had to give it. I can tell you what it was now. <laughs> what flour sugar? Did you use brown it was, sugar? It was two sticks of butter, three Ooh. cups of flour, a cup of brown sugar, a cup of white sugar, teaspoon of uh, vanilla flavor, 
uh, half a teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of sea salt. Oh, yeah. And then your cup of chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. We had like, all I had was two mixes, so I put peanut butter chips and chocolate chips. Yeah, because we were working with what we had left over from Christmas. That was it. Much. You cream the, uh, and, and two eggs. Yeah. You cream the butter and the sugars, and you slowly mix in your dry. This is, this is what the recipe told me to do. Slowly mix in your flour, because if, if you turn that thing on, flour go everywhere. Yep. No, I figured that out. <laughs> Clean this up your flour. flour the next day. <laughs> and then you add your eggs. You add your eggs in there and your liquid stuff and put your chips in there at the end. And then I, used, the, I used my hush puppy scoop, scooped them out on some uh, parchment paper on a cookie sheet. 13 minutes, I think it was, and mm-hmm. took them out and let them set. Man, they were beautiful. They were good. I'm working on that recipe. Uh, I'm gonna try it on the, on the grill. I was thinking, say you can do it on a pellet smoker for sure. I'm try. I can make it better. I think so. I'm gonna take yeah. that standard. Is that like a standard chocolate chip cookie recipe? I yeah. Just, Sometimes I always thought I mean, making cookies can... was hard. I mean, I was like, man, there's nothing to this. A cookies is the easiest. Moron can make these. <laughs> cookies are the easiest. <laughs> they were. Um, you can add nuts and different varieties. You know, different mm-hmm. chi- chips and different things. Yeah. But they're pretty much a simple recipe. Yeah, that's no, no fail chocolate chip cookies right there. It made a bunch of them too. I have a. But you gave them all away. I got eight, three of them. Eat, we're okay. <laughs> um, we uh, before we get talking about some other things, uh, I wanted to say since we were talking about Malcolm style ribs, Jay Durbin released a video. Jay, did we talk about his new channel last week? Did he have it last week? I think he did, didn't he? This one's a new video. Yeah, he's got two new ones now. Yeah. Tennessee Mojo. I think we did talk about his channel last week. Making it Mojo. Making it Mojo. Y'all go check out Jay's channel. But he put the recipe he used to win Memphis in May last year. I hadn't watched it yet. He put you it watched up. it? I watched half of it and was then it, I was just Was he giving the real deal or was he? Uh yeah. You yeah. know, Jay don't Yeah. He didn't hide to you know. No. And he it's a pretty simple. I want to try his wings. I did watch his his first two videos that he did like a sriracha wing and he did it on his Weber vortex, these wings. And then when he finished them up, he, he, he kind of did this, the grill fried wings yeah, instead yeah, of smoke yeah. fried. He set that oil right there over that vortex. I was like, <laughs> that's brave. That's brave man. <laughs> that's I'm just scared. I had to burn, burn my like, house down. That's dangerous. And he, he said, be careful. He said, you top. want to get it 350. He said he had a thermometer in there. It's 350. One splat, one wrong <laughs> splash of a wing. And he'd had fireball. <laughs> And then when that whole pan <laughs> caught on fire, man. But, but his wings look fantastic. They did. Then and I'm sure a, they he tasted made up a, great. He made up a killer uh, sauce with sriracha. Yeah, I thought that was a good sauce. sauce. I wanted to that. try yeah, it. Yeah. But they're, he did. They're beautiful. But if you want to see what the rib that won Memphis and May this past year. Go watch it. Go watch Making It Mojo. Making It Mojo or Jay Durbin on YouTube. And he's probably You can go find him on Facebook and Instagram. I'm sure you've oh, got yeah. links to his yeah. YouTube. We got a link on our Facebook page, to too. It. Good. Um, so we've been at home and we've been cooking. We have. Is that what we're talking about today? <laughs> is everything we've been cooking? A little bit. Well, you know, this quarantine has gave us time to work on some yeah, other stuff. That's true. So we did our. We released that um, first delicious dinners. Yes. Yeah. Those are going to be a different. They're not really a different style. It's just a shorter video. Real quick. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to give a good recipe and then show y'all. Some of the stuff that we just cook when we're having dinner. I mean, we might yeah. incorporate the grill, but some of it's a lot of it's cooked just right there on and the stove. stove. Um, this is something we've been wanting to add for a while, but you know, it took quarantine and for everything to get canceled to to slow us down enough to yeah. get us to actually do it. So um, the first one was the grilled chicken and sausage pasta jambalaya. Yeah, pastalaya. Pastalaya. A lot of people said uh, that that's. Yeah, I don't. What, I, I, I'd never heard it called pastalaya. I, I hadn't either. I, I mean, I never. I just know it's jambalaya with noodles instead of rice. <laughs> and we kind of did a... Uh, I'd use what, what I had. had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I would, I'd have liked to have had some more stuff to put in it and done it up. I, I mean, that's a quick dinner. Yeah. It, it really is. is. And you can, you know, you could even... So if you were prepping, you know you are going to make that. You could, you could grill your chicken and sausage and have that in the fridge and bust it back out that's and warm true. it up. Use the jarred sauce, the pasta noodles. And, you know, it's a really easy recipe to make. Somebody said, why didn't you use celery? Because I didn't have any. <laughs> and I some- picked up some at ClickList today, though, Jack. <laughs> I sure did. I got me some celery and a bell pepper, but the onions they gave me look all sprouty. Uh, they do but, look pretty. Yeah. 
They're small and sprouty. I know. What do we do with them? We'll figure something out. I'm going to plan on see if I can grow some more. <laughs> no, we can throw them on the fire. Yeah, yeah there you go. There's smoking <laughs> onions. <laughs> um, That's a good idea, though. Somebody <laughs> said that, uh, somebody asked if they could use red sauce instead of the white sauce. Heck yeah. Whatever you could do you want. anything. Mm-hmm. You could. You, could you really could. You could use the you sausage. Mean, yeah. You could. Oh, that would, that'd would that be pretty good with the red, red sauce. sauce. Yeah. I don't see why not. After um, people were saying. You take the sausage out, just use chicken. You yeah. can t- substitute shrimp for the chicken. Yeah. You uh, could do anything. Yeah. I don't know. Beef would work very well in that one. Uh, yeah. You could make it, you know, you could make it vegetarian. Just add some mushrooms instead of. Oh, yeah. Instead of the meat, you know, if you wanted to. Um, We did that. We had a rest of a dinner this week we did. Where we just. We had mushrooms. some extra mushrooms that were going bad, and so you just kind of threw a pasta together with another jar of sauce, and and uh, did the same mushrooms. thing pretty much without the. It didn't have the onions and the peppers and stuff though. No, it was super quick and easy. What was it? Just mushrooms and green onion? Yeah. What we had? Yeah. And and penne pop? Is it penne? Penne. It was what in the mini penne? Yeah. You could have used any noodle too in that recipe. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. What's some other ones that would work good? Uh, like uh, elbow macaroni, probably, oh, yeah. or uh, um, that, like a, the real curly one that I yeah, like, the yeah. cala, cava, whatever. Yeah, you anyway, can use any. I'm not Italian, but yeah, it's cor- <laughs> corkscrew. Yes, yeah, <it's> corkscrews. <laughs> um, or the what's the butterfly with the for folly <laughs> or whatever that's got. What's yeah. that? Or the bow ties. The bow ties. Bow ties yeah. would work. Tech shells would work. Any kind. Any kind. You could get, I mean. You could serve it over fettuccine. Yeah. I mean, that's it's basically an alfred, fettuccine Alfredo just kicked up. Just a little different, you know. Yeah, with some sausage and some Peppers onions and onions and, and cajified. And some seasoning. And some seasoning. Don't forget the Cajun seasoning. If you don't have King Crawl, use Tony's or Zatarans. Ooh, be careful or, with Tony's. It's salty. Yeah, some of them get too salty on you. But you need to, you need to get those seasonings going with that. That would be good, but man, it would be good with crawfish. Oh, Yeah. You could throw crawfish like in there and sausage. In the salt, yeah. With the sauce Ooh, yeah. and the pasta. Yeah, um, when I was uh, looking up pasta, pasta, say that, pasta, pastalaya. Pastalaya. I saw T-Roy. He has a YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cooks. T-Roy Cooks. I know. He did one. His was a little more detailed. He used a red sauce. He used canned tomatoes. He His was a more of a real recipe, and ours was more of a quick, quick and dinner. Easy dinner. Yeah, delicious dinner. Yeah. That's what, that's what uh, this whole thing of us doing these are. And this week, so I'm going to do... Uh, we talked about that last, last week. week yeah. The chicken and the broccoli and yep. the... We're going to hopefully shoot that tonight then. We'll yeah. get through later on today. Um, this weekend, we did the stay in and cook out. That was fun. It was. I don't know if... Uh, I mean, I hope everybody jumped on Instagram or saw it on social media. But it was... Uh, man, that thing ended up being, I would say, worldwide. There was Probably. people participating from everywhere. And it was just sharing that same hashtag, stay in, cook out. PK started it. And... But uh, other grill companies picked jumped up on board. You had, to, you know, hardware, you know, yeah. retailers were on board, accessory. Like, uh, you know, I, I jumped on there that morning on Instagram. First time I ever did like the live Instagram with Brad Barrett from Grill Greats. And we started for breakfast or it was kind of brunch, I guess. It was 9 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you? That's breakfast for <laughs> Yeah. That's early for Saturday. <laughs> and we went all day. <laughs> you know, we, we just cooked stuff outside. And we did a story. We had a we saved that story to our, our Instagram feed. If anybody wants to go back and check out what we did, but um, you did I, the interviews with Mark, and you did one with Jay. It kind of made it feel like we weren't just me and you out back at yeah. the home. Well, it was at home cooking by yeah, ourselves. Quarantine, anymore, yeah. quarantine cookout. <laughs> it made it, it was, feel a little more yeah, communal. Yeah, and I like that. That was fun. I really liked that Instagram live. I mean, I don't know. Um, we're new to it, so I'm not good at it. But we want to figure out ways to incorporate that to more stuff that we're doing outside when we're cooking, because I think it's interesting. You know, I like I watched other people's. Yeah, I, mean, I was watching people's all day. Well, yeah, because you were tired of talking to me, probably. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Why would you say that? But what also I did that morning. Yeah, so what'd you do? You that started morning, off with the sandwich. I fired up. 360 and my classic PKs I had the grill grates on them. I flipped one set of grill grates on the classic over to where I had the back of it for a flat top. I did some bacon, uh, you know, just chimney and charcoal, fried me up some bacon. It didn't take long. And then I did some uh, sausage patties. And this was like my mom's homemade sausage. She patties them up and puts some wax pepper in between them and freezes them. 
so we can pull them out of the freezer and bust them off and you can fry them up for breakfast. Well, I was like, well, heck, these are, you know, big enough for as little hamburgers. I said, I can grill them. And I, I was shocked at how well they grilled up. I never grilled them like a, you know, like a hamburger or yeah. steak. I put them on there, put the twist on them, flipped them, did the same thing. That sausage was perfect. I cooked it to like 165 internal. I checked it just to be sure because it's ground pork. I liked it better than like skillet. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was, man, it got a great flavor on it. The, the crust the crust was crunchy on the outside, but it was still soft and juicy on the inside. Is that then, why you called it a breakfast burger? Yeah, because I cooked it like a hamburger. Yeah. And so I took an everything bagel, split it. Put some marks on it on the grill. It didn't take a minute on, you know, for each side of it. You cooked me a fried egg. It wasn't a fried. You told me you didn't want it fried. You want it scrambled. Well, it was kind of, yeah. It was scrambled in a sh- yeah, 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 yeah. Circular. Circular form. It was form. more square yeah. shape. But that's <laughs> what I was still saying. You fried it. it. Yeah. I mean, it was just hard fried. Yeah. And then we laid, I laid some cheese over it. I put, so when the sausage was finishing up, you brought the egg out. I laid it on top. Put me a piece of cheese over it. Had my bagel ready. Scooped it over. Put it on it. Two strips of bacon. Topped it. Man, you talk about a breakfast burger. It was very good. It was really good. Michael said it was way better than any McMuffin he's ever had. <laughs> he even said it was better than the gas station biscuit. Better than the gas station biscuit. <laughs> hey, that's high praise now because our gas station, the J&J One Stop, could make a heck of a sausage yeah, biscuit. Yeah. Smoked sausage biscuit, sausage biscuit, steak biscuit. They got it on lockdown they at the do. J&J One Stop. <laughs> Highway 51 at Oak Grove. Give a shout out to them. I wish I knew the guy's name. The, um... They do fried chicken. Their breakfast is the bomb. It is. I ain't going to lie. I asked that lady in there one morning. I was like, man, you've been back there making all these biscuits. And she was like, yeah, I started laughing. She said, they're froze. I said, no way. They, I guess it's like a. A Cisco or something? It's got to be like a Cisco, Benny Key, something. Yeah. You know, one of those U.S. foods or something. But I, I wish I had those. Because they're a perfect biscuit. Big old, you know, like yes. granny would make yes. biscuits, you know. When my aunt, when we were growing up, my aunt worked at, I think it was Cisco. And so she would order us stuff so we would get the KFC biscuits. Oh, yeah. yeah. KFC used to have some good biscuits yeah. back in the day. I ain't had them in a long time. But I tell you, the ones that got them, the best biscuit from a chicken joint is Bojangles. You ever had a Bojangles chicken and biscuit? I can't remember. Man, it's good. We don't have I think they're bringing a Bojangles back up to Horn Lake. Oh, really? I heard that. Oh. There used to be one there when I was growing up. Now we just need a Whataburger years. and... Be in business, yeah. <laughs> so after the um, sandwich, you started, you worked, did the picanha. That was it. So I ha- had, how have you cooked picanha in the past? So the traditional way, on you know, on a rotisserie. Do you trim? Do you cut it the same way? Um, well, you have to think about how you want to slice it. Yeah. Where you when you're getting your slices, it's against the grain. So when you put it on a spit, uh, spit you kind of cut it different because it's got a go on there and you want the fat draping around the outside, but then when you cut it, you want to also be cutting it. Yeah. It's it you want to be cutting it, you know, across that grain on the outside. So it's really different than the way I cut it up. Okay. So you I cut, cut it, it up different. with the grain. Yeah. Because when I cut it, I was gonna come back across that. Yeah. Okay. And so gotcha. that's so the it would be the reverse way to cook it the traditional way on spit so that the surface is perfect for cutting it. And the only thing it gets when you when you spit roast it is salt. They just use a heavy, you know, coarse salt. And that's it. And then it's usually served uh, super rare. I mean, I guess you can get it however you want it, but I would eat it rare. Yeah. And you got to have some of that crispy fat that's been rendering. And then you got to, ha- you know, have a, a good chimichurri to go with it. So I kind of, I wanted to do uh, a version of it for people that didn't have a rotisserie. And then I was, instead of seasoning it just with salt, I said, it's got to be good with some other stuff. <laughs> so what'd you season uh, it with? Man. I know you put uh, pot. No, I used the grit. Oh, yeah, that's right. I used um, uh, Martin Jeremy Swine Life's Mississippi Grit to give it like a little citrusy note, kind mm-hmm. of. And it's AP. Think of a citrus AP kind of. It's yeah. not super citrus, but it has some notes. And then uh, I just used hot rub like I would a steak and kept it easy. I mean, and then I, you know, I put it on there. And what I did, I set my 360 up for kind of a, a reverse sear. I put all my coals on one side. And it, brought the, it was probably about 325, 350. I had my raised cooking more grid on there to get it up a little bit more away from the heat. I put those three pieces of that. Uh, and it, this was uh, Wagyu. Oh, yeah. It was beautiful. <laughs> it was an A5, I think it said. It came from the butcher shop. Yeah, from Kevin. It wasn't A9. It was A5, which is still a super high grade. The marbling on it was crazy. And I you know, just cut it into big steaks, kind of squared it up. And it, got, it went up on the rack away from the heat. And I put a Thermalworks probe in it. 
and I let it come up to it was like one fifteen, one twenty, right in that range. It was one fifteen. I said yeah, it I at think first. it was one fifteen. Then I took it off, and then took that rack off and spread my coals out and just got it rock, you know, rocket. Got the and opened the PK three sixty up where it was really hot, and then I just seared it. It was you know maybe like a minute fifteen, and I turn minute fifteen, flip, do the edges, and the fat crisp up real nice. I mean it was. It was it was amazing. It was and then so I cut it. I, there's a picture of it on there. You can see it. I mean, it's exactly. it was. I mean, every bit of that and more. Maybe the best bite of beef I've ever had, and that's saying a lot because I've had some good beef. I love picanha. It was it's man that wagyu picanha is. I don't know how easy. I mean, you know, Kevin gets it, but I don't know how he gets it on the red. I would like to just try some reg, you know, like choice grade. I don't know where you get it. I don't know. You don't ever see it in a store. Mm-mm. I don't know if there's a way to source it, but. uh I've had it. We've had Prime. The Matador. Where did I get that? Yeah, I got it from Matador. Matador Prime, but they don't eat. They, they shut down. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm sure some of these other beef companies probably have it. I wonder if that. But if you get a chance it. to get it, oh, try it. Yeah, try. It. I bet Hassel. I wonder if Hassel has some. Yeah. Hassel Cattle Company. I bet you they do. What do you call them? Hassleback. <laughs> Hasselback of <laughs> <a> potato. <laughs> <A> potato. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you they. You know, they check see if they got some. I'd like to try yeah. theirs. Compare it. But man, yeah, just that, compare. So it's just sirloin, so sirloin cap, <laughs> or uh, when you cut it in steaks, you see it called culotte steak, is that or what pecan. It's called, steak? Yeah, so yeah, pecan is kind of a South South American, I guess. When I think of it, I think, I think of like Brazil or somewhere like that. So is the cut uh, called pecanha? Yeah. Before I mean, you before you cook it, it's actually called a pecanha. I, guess I mean, I guess that's just what they call it down there. I don't. Okay. I mean, we don't. I mean, it's not referred to the. You don't you know, know what it's referred to. USDA is not calling it pecan. They're, They're calling, calling it sirloin, sirloin cap. cap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We've got a picture of it in there in the bathroom. You ever notice it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's from Certified Angus Beef. You know, yeah. they got all these different uh, cut, different pictures of different cuts. And we have to take a picture of that and put it on the Instagram. Yeah. Certified Angus Beef when we were when up you're there. Washing your hands for the <laughs> thousandth time. You can turn around and look at all the pictures of steak cuts. They have cut. these little sheets where they, you know, show you where each cut's from. And I took one of all of them and framed them and kind of have a in the office uh, bathroom i have a collage a collage certified it's, cool. it's perfect for here yeah it goes with the motif of our office it was delicious it was awesome yeah and i made a fresh chimichurri so how'd you make the chimichurri um flat leaf parsley cilantro a bunch each like one bunch each mm-hmm. chopped it up super fine you know washed it got yeah. the stems out chopped it up super fine some fresh garlic um a little bit of salt and pepper, and then uh, some lime juice. I just squeeze like half a lime, just squeeze it over it. Some olive oil. Trickle, a trickle of uh, red wine vinegar, just enough to give it some acidity, a little bump of acidity. And then I drizzled in some olive oil and just stirred it up so it had a good consistency. It was really good. And then it needs to set, just kind of come together. It's super simple. It's probably one of the most simple condiment things you can make a relish or salsa or whatever you want to call it because it's not very many ingredients but man it's good it's so good and with that beef like that hot beef coming off the grill you know rare to mid rare topped with a little bit of that chimichurri it's it's fine the um i've been eating the chimichurri this week we've i had we had some leftover mini penne noodles yeah from that dish because i cooked way too many noodles for that delicious dinner cooked the whole box you did half the box right <laughs> I had half a box of penne noodles in the refrigerator, but I would take that, add some of that chimichurri to it, stir it up, and man, it, it was good. good. Yeah, there's still a little bit of that left. I don't add just a touch. There may be a few slices of pecan. I got to where I was, like we had omelets with it for breakfast <laughs> yeah. one day. Um, I did like oh, I, we did tacos. We with had it. some little street taco shells, and we topped it and ate it with some tacos. And we, we've been got some stretch out of that there. this week. Yeah, we've been eating on it all week, and it's. I didn't share that with nobody. Was too good. <laughs> that one stayed. <laughs> that stayed in the family. That stayed in the family. If it wouldn't have been quarantined, somebody might have come over and got some. Oh but, yeah. But that one stayed in the family. Um. Well, you also then, did some stuffed peppers. Yeah. So I did. And I like this idea a lot. I, I had. I took some of the ground deer I had in the in the fridge. You know, browned it up in a skillet. Uh, threw in a block of cream cheese, seasoned it up. Added some parm, like some shredded parm to it. Uh, little parsley. You know, little little dried parsley. That's pretty much it. Was, and some uh, some of Jay's regular barbecue rub. Yeah. Like a tablespoon of it just to give it some flavor. Seasoning. I seasoned that deer meat with a little AP. 
But, you know, so I just made this sausage cheese mixture, just like you'd, you know, stuff something with. Mm-hmm. And and uh, you did the peppers for me. You, you kind of uh, split them, them in half. half and and then seeded them. Seeded them. And these are little sweet peppers. Yeah, not that. You could have used jalapenos, but we just had the little tricolors like you get from a bag at the grocery store. Red, yellow, and orange. And then you just put them on the grill and cooked them. We stuffed them, stuffed put them, them on the grill and cooked them. They're, the the stu- the inside, the stuffing's done. So really yeah. all you're doing is cooking, softening the pepper up. And I just put the, once I finished up the grill and the picanha, I checked the PK back some, put that braised rack back on there and just set those peppers up there. In 30, 45 minutes, they were done. They sweated down. Shrivel. You know they're done when they kind of shrivel up and the, and the cheese gets back to bubbling mm-hmm. on the inside. And that was it was simple. It yeah. was. I feel like it needed just a touch of cheese on top or something to dip Fish it, it in. Yeah. Or, you know, something. I, feel I like didn't make, well, we, we dipped it in a, like a, a roasted garlic dip or something. Yeah. Maybe. It would have been good with like a Mexican style ranch. That would have been like really that. good. I feel like if that dish was an outfit, it was missing like the accessory. One component the or something. Yeah. Well, I mean, so I'll tell you what would have finished it, wrapping it in bacon, but I didn't want I didn't have Yeah, you didn't want, want I didn't have any bacon to do that with. So. But we, if we would have topped it with cheese or something and melted Maybe. the cheese on At top. At the end, yeah. kind of put cheese on top and let it cook over it or something, yeah. that probably would have been good. And then served it with a Mexican ranch, it would have been really yeah. good. Or just what if you just dipped it in white cheese dip? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna. It'd have been this like it was, was kind of like a, a <laughs> mini poblanos or something like that. You kinda. know, it kind of. I mean, you. So that's probably what you were comparing it to. If you'd have had something to serve over it, you could always dredge them in flour and egg wash and panko and deep fry them. <laughs> I do love and a then serve white pepper. cheese dip over. I'm missing my. I'm missing my la siesta. <laughs> can't get my Mexican my weekly Mexican fix it's not the same we did get it to go last week even got the margaritas to go we had like half a pitcher of margaritas and uh it wasn't the same no it's not the same as eating there in that environment food was okay but it's just you know anytime you're doing takeout it seems like it gets cold before you get it home and reheating it's not it's not near as good and you still gotta clean up and yeah that's why I'd rather just about cook than yeah. I had to try to do takeout that's yeah. the first place I'm going. <laughs> yeah. When I lift this band and open the restaurants back up, we'll be up there. Monster Margarita, my friend. Big Cerveza. Uh, We're going to rent that whole party room out and yeah. everybody. Yeah. Mexican is on me. <laughs> Let's go. It's fiesta time. Hopefully it'll be before Cinco de Mayo. If not, I'm going to have to throw a Cinco de Mayo party. <laughs> it's just us. I Virtually. Guess. No. I've got it on here. Dishes to work on. Polo Tapatillas. That's the one I want to do. <laughs> I got to do is that. Is that going to be like a delicious dinner so this or a regular is, recipe? I don't know. I got to work on it. I've never tried to make it. I've What's always ordered it. Tapatillas? So they take like For mushrooms, the- onions, maybe some bell pepper. It's if you think fajita style. And then they do uh, fry up a bunch of bacon first. <laughs> And, then, and they get it crispy. It's like yeah, it's like it, yeah, it's like they take half a. It's not like Wendy's half burger. a strip of bacon, and then and then it gets like a little curly piece the way they fry it up on a flat top. I'm imagining, but you probably get four or five pieces of bacon. Yeah. And so that's like eight of those little curly pieces, <laughs> and then they take chicken breast, and they grill those or flat top them, and then it goes on top of the veg. Bacon goes on top of that, then they t- they dump the cheese dip all over that, and they bring it out on like a fajita platter, sizzling hot. So the cheese is bubbling and melting, and everything's cooked, and you cut it up and eat it with flour tortillas and like guacamole salad. And it's probably my favorite dish at La Siesta, <laughs> besides besides the mocajete. Don't get it with the uh, so I gotta do jalapenos. That too. Hold on, no, it was <laughs> like it's like getting pepper spray. <laughs> I've had it come to the restaurant and just blow everybody out. Everybody's crying. <laughs> I gotta put mocha hete on here too. Mocha, mocha hete. hete would be hard to pull off. No, I got the bowl and everything. I got, you know, I've got it. Yeah, I'm talking about it's just it's just a bunch of grilled meat stuff in there and then put cheese all over it. I know. How was that? That's that's no brainer. I can do that. What? Okay. I believe in you. I'm gonna make I a would gringo love... grande gringo mocha hete, the grande mocha hete. And a gringo polo tapatillas. <laughs> gringo bacon top chicken. That's going to be a good one, too. I'm in. I'm going to give La Siesta credit. I don't know if they're the one that made it up. If it's something they do here in Hernando Branch only. <laughs> but it is good. <laughs> I had on here to talk about all the different types of ribs. 
What are all the um? Well, we kind of did. I talked about the loin ribs and yeah. the, and the spare ribs. And I, I I listed all the ribs oh. that we had on the website. Okay, it's a pretty good amount. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, let's see. I'm thinking jerk. We had a jerk. Jerk. At, didn't I do like a you Asian a style, Korean? Korean style rib? Texas. Yep. Uh, a Kansas City. Yep. Memphis. Memphis. Yep. Um, Texas. Spicy. Did you say Texas? Yep, Texas. You did a country style rib recipe. That's not really uh, ribs, but yeah. um, sure. you did the hanging ribs on the uh, UDS. That's all the all the rib recipes I've done. Yeah, you I've did done lamb ribs. I know I've done lamb ribs. I've well, done beef. I was ribs. only looking at pork ribs. Okay, I, I didn't put any of the beef ribs or any of that. There's stuff still on some here. more I can do. Yeah, I've got a bunch of rib. I've got a bunch of rib recipes. I can whole do. smoked spare ribs. Do you remember those? You just took the whole spare That's ribs, old seasoned school. them, put them on the pit, and did nothing else. That's old school. Yeah. Um, char glaze ribs. I like that one. You're not that crazy about it. Char glaze okay. Um, all those Jack are on Daniel's the ribs. Those are good. That was, sauce was good. Yes, it was. You could have put that on anything. Yeah, I think a, we did, I did it on, I did it on, a, it on chicken. I do it <laughs> on chicken nuggets. <laughs> it's good on everything. <laughs> I think you also used glaze. it for uh, sirloin. sirloin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we had two different competition ribs. One Heath at Memphis May. One, yeah. one with Heath. Yep. Yep. So those. Competition style ribs. I need to bring but two Wh- different. Styles. I need to bring Waylon on and let's go back and do the very first rib where we made the one that we did from Food Network, where we would used to put the cavenders on there and the jerk and, and then let it sit overnight and then uh-huh. rinse it off and then we made this rub with forty two different ingredients <laughs> in it. It had, it had all kinds of crazy. It had stuff to be in complicated it. to win. Oh right? yeah, it had all kinds of crazy stuff in it. And then yeah, I need to bring him on and see if we can do that one. The old school sauce, if he knows how to make it with the glaze. I bet he does. I bet he's got it written down somewhere. I bet he does. I bet he does. That'd be Waylon's competition rib. <laughs> that was a good rib, but man, it was intense. Yeah. <laughs> it, was <laughs> it was a lot of... It's a, that might You're going to know it was there. Three-part video series <laughs> on that one. <laughs> the brining of the rib. Yeah. The dry brining. It was dry brining before anybody was saying dry brining. Yeah. He didn't like, even know it was dry uh, brining. He got, he got, I forget who he got that from, but it was it's sure, straight up cavenders and some jerk. But it was like way before I was making jerk. We were buying like a oh, yeah. Kroger. I don't even think it was, was it called Caribbean seasoning or Caribbean jerk or something like that? It wasn't called Jamaican jerk. Or yeah. It was, it was some Kroger seasoning that he had found that. I remember he had. It was real obscure. I mean, it was good though. He had to bring the ribs to the hotel rooms and like yeah, rinse, rinse, the rinse them off <laughs> in the bathrooms because <laughs> we didn't have a sink. Yeah, out we didn't there. have a sink. We had that old fish cleaning sink that we bring. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> we'd stretch a hose out to run it back away from our site where water would get out or we'd flood it. <laughs> I think Tater still got that sink on the back of his porch. I bet. I bet he does. He's got one hey, of my old drums we made too. We need one of those sinks in our little yeah. I need, a, I need a decent sink back there. Um, I got a water hose. That's all I need. So we have two different comp style ribs. Every comp guy has a different recipe. Yeah. Pretty I'd much. I'd say so. Or variation of. A variation, recipe. yeah. yeah. We I've, also, got, I've probably got a dozen that we yeah. run, you know? I'm, <laughs> you're just yeah. tweaking little things on it for comps. Depending on where you're at or what you think's hitting or what you want to gamble with. or Yeah. But you forgot, <laughs> or, you know, oh, or you'll this. be like, remember, or what you can borrow. That? Yeah. 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 I was thinking, of, try that today. Um, you also have a rib tip recipe. I rib, love me. Rib, rib tips, tips are good. Now that's a, I don't know if that's a, a Memphis thing or more of a soul thing. I mean, you don't see it in a lot of barbecue joints unless you're in a real good one. Yeah. You, know? you got somebody that's how to cook rib tips. There's nothing to them really. No, you, you put just, them on there and cook them to the room. Till they tender. Almost fall apart or fall apart. And then you just gnaw on them. Yeah, it's all the good bits. <laughs> it's about like the ends of the Yeah, the, end, the the end pieces, the flat the flat pieces that we trim off. The what I call the the rib tips is kind of like the where where the ribs come around and they join back to the breastbone. So mm-hmm. it's all that, you know, cartilage where it gets down to that area and it runs all the way down. And that's 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 what it is. Yeah. It's good. It's good. It's a lot of fat, a lot of a lot of gristly fat, yeah. and all the meat in there is succulent. So, um, you don't mind gnawing? I don't mind. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Easter's coming up. It is, and uh, I already know what I'm doing next week for an Easter video. I have, uh, I'm pretty sure I have 
when I when I did the the last turkey video I did, I think it was the Texas turkey breast. It was. Kevin sent me some of these. Uh, it was those big boneless turkey breast. Beautiful. And yeah, and I think I have another one in the freezer. I got to dig it out because it's done settled down to the bottom. But I, I need to do that when I, when I go home tonight. Remind me to take that out of the freezer because it needs several days to thaw out. But I want to do. I know everybody's seen me do the honey baked or honey smoked ham. I'm gonna do the honey smoked turkey breast, kind of the same way. And if you if you you've had that uh, turkey breast from uh, Honey Baked Ham Company, where you you know no, order it, it's got that same. Breast. It's almost it's not a it's not a praline, but it's kind of got that sugary caramelized glaze sugar. Yeah. On the outside, that's what I'm gonna do. I think you can buy the sandwich meat in the lunch counter. Okay, the honey baked ham. Yeah. Oh, well, no, the honey baked turkey. Honey baked turkey. Well, that's what I'm doing for Easter. And then I I do have us a ham that I'm gonna thaw out. For uh, Easter, we're gonna be quarantine Easter, so it, it'll just be what we want to eat at the house. And what I'm thinking about doing is for that Saturday before Easter, going ahead and cooking my ham. And all we have to do is get up, and warm it up. So if we watch church or whatever, we can not have to go outside and cook that yeah. that morning. And uh, we might could shoot. I'm thinking a video about well, that's what I was thinking about doing on Instagram. I was thinking about cooking along. If anybody else wanted to cook their ham, get you a spiral ham. <laughs> Maybe I'll How release. How hard is it to reheat? <laughs> <laughs> it ain't. What do you mean? It ain't nothing to it. <laughs> Turn the oven on and set it in there. It's a be an aluminum pan. And um, it's simple. I've got a. Takes good, about forty five minutes on three hundred. There is a good uh, side I'd like to share for your side chick segment. Oh, I had I had a thing on here. Side chicks Easter contri- contributions. Macaroni and cheese. Yes, that's the number one one. What other two do you think I have? Dressing. Yep, and one more. It's either carrots, nope. lima beans, yeah, baby, b- butter, butter beans, beans, baby butter beans, triple bees. <laughs> triple bees. <laughs> I already bought them too. They're in the freezer. I pl- picked them up on click list. Oh, I bought okay. everything that you were going to need. I even bought the buttermilk <laughs> to to make the cornbread for the dressing. I've got some chicken froze. We're going to throw out and boil our chicken and make us some chicken broth to make the dressing. I got celery. I got the on- onions. I don't know. That's why you bought all that stuff. I got some eggs to boil. I don't know if we have any pimento. I don't like pimento in my okay. dress. That's well, we'll what you think that. you do. I do like onion and celery. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know what I don't have, though? I, hope we, I don't know if we have any fresh poultry herbs. We'll have to do dry poultry season, probably. I'm sure I've got, I'm not for sure I know I've got parsley, thyme, probably some sage up there, so we'll be okay. But anyway, that's what we're having for Easter. Yeah. So we'll put together, are we going to turn and I this- got some rolls. Side chick segment into a video, or is this mm, just going to be? I don't know where we're going to go with sides chick stuff. <laughs> it's my sides chick. She's got her whole line of stuff. My sides for... chick. My sides okay. chick. <laughs> I got lots of sides chick. So, um, we're doing our delicious dinner tonight. We talked about it last week, but it's yeah. the chicken breast, sweet potatoes, and broccoli. That's it. So, look for that next we week. We have enough broccoli left over. We might see if you want to do a broccoli salad. Okay. That's a good one to put, oh, on, yeah. put on Instagram, share the recipe. Salad. For It'll Easter. go with the yeah. This Saturday, oh, before we do that, this Saturday before we get to Easter, we're gonna do um, another stay in cookout. I don't know. What, I mean, if everybody's gonna be doing that, we're gonna be tagging it. I guess if, if everybody else, else to do. If not, we'll just be stay in eating. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm doing wings. I got wings, wings, wings right right here. Um, I don't know how many different ways I'm gonna do them, but I uh, but I but I got some chicken wings. I, they had them at the store, and I click listed them. So. I got them thawing out, and I'm gonna do. I know I'm gonna do some vortex wings. I think I think I'm gonna do marks. I, I want to do those I'm Parmesan down. crusted wings. I love those. Uh, just share that recipe he did, That's... and then um, I might do another breakfast if I can. I wanted some big burrito case uh, flour tortilla size to to do some breakfast quesadillas, but they didn't have them. I didn't get those, so I don't know if we're gonna be able to do they didn't what have I had mine. I wanted to do some breakfast quesadillas on the back side of. We a, have many. Shells, you could do mini quesadillas. Maybe. We'll see. We'll You're see. You're not interested in that at all. I want a big quesadilla that I can cut into four quarters and serve with some, you know, kicked up sour cream and have kind of like a brunch quesadilla. Yeah. I think I got a good idea. I've never done it, but I think it'll be good. I mean, I love breakfast tacos or breakfast burritos, so why not breakfast quesadillas? Yeah. And the PK, great. You know, the flat side will be perfect for it. So, anyway, that's Saturday. And then, uh, have you thought about your delicious dinner recipe for next week? I had on my mind because I found a 
old ham bone, and I said, we're going to have a ham bone left over this. I was going to do red beans and rice. Ooh, okay. But I don't know if they didn't have, they didn't give me red beans in my click list. There was something that was out of red beans, so I can't do red beans and rice unless you got some stashed. Uh, do we have a bag of red beans in there? It's possible. If we have red beans in the pantry, I'm doing, I know we got rice. You're kind of famous for your red beans and rice. That's, uh, hey, that's the first, do you know, red beans and rice was the very first trophy that we ever got as Killer Hogs. <laughs> really? Yeah. And my buddy Theron Malone, uh, River City Rubs, yeah. his, his KCBS team, he's really good. Memphis, uh, KCBS cook, really good. Heck yeah, he used to cook the... with us. Uh, he was he cooked with Red Hot, mm-hmm. um, you know, when they were winning Memphis and May. And it, Theron's a good guy. And uh, he worked with my dad at Avert Express. And I knew him from an, another buddy, and he was just getting into barbecue then before he had a team. And he come over and, and cooked with us out at Lakeland Fun Fest when it was at the Ag Center. And he was like, man, I got a red beans and rice recipe. And I was like, yeah, man, sure, you can do red beans and rice. And he brought it out there, and this was back when Killer Hawks partied. I mean, we were <laughs> – you know, we were doing the keg toss, the toilet, the toilet races. We didn't. I mean, we, we might have turned some barbecue in. I don't know. That wasn't the main objective. That wasn't though. the main objective. It was seeing how big a party you could throw, and we did. I think uh, <laughs> I don't want to get him in trouble, but I think his his father in law come out there, and his, his wife had to come get him the next morning because he didn't go home. Like <laughs> she found him in our tent, just passed out on his big lawn chair. You know, like one of them laying out tanning lawn chairs. <laughs> And, and then there, it was, just, there. It, was, it was a good deal. It was, it was good times. <laughs> Killer Hall's classic. But so all that being said, I think, oh, yeah, this is way before your time. This is probably back circa 99, 2000. This is a while. This is a while. This is 20 years ago, you know, or oh, more than maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I remember at the awards that time, the only, they went through, you know, all of them, but they got the red beans and rice. I was like, we didn't, you know, we didn't think we was going to get anything. And then they called Killer Hall. You would have thought we won grand. <laughs> it was, I mean, we took that trophy, that red beans and rice, and walked it around, made sure everybody saw it. And it, from then on, you know, it's been on. <laughs> we were hooked. But Theron's the one that cooked it. Yeah, Theron's the one that cooked it. We didn't even cook it. But going back to it, I kind of developed my red beans and rice recipe after tasting what a winning red beans and rice tasted okay. like. So yeah. I started making it and my mom's a heck of a I mean she can make a the best pot of yeah. pinto beans or white beans you ever had. And now she does one she calls Cajun beans, uses uh white beans, navy beans. I thought it was or great northern beans. She does them either way. You want yeah. brown beans, you want red beans, you want white, she do them, but they're her Cajun beans. And they are really good. Well I I do more of a traditional, you know Yeah, yeah. Yours is more thick, got a good gravy kind of to it. The beans are served over just rice. right. Served with rice. Got plenty of good sausage in it, a little bit of ham or tasso or something like that. I usually use smoked uh, ham hocks or either a good smoked ham bone. That's what got me want to do it. I saw I run across the ham bones we had, I guess, from Christmas. I think that's a great idea. But that's what I'm going to try to do. If not, I'll come up with something else delicious, I guarantee Because you have a lot of recipes like your gumbo and your you know, red beans mm-hmm. and rice and del- dishes like that that are... Not necessarily barbecue dishes, yeah. but they're stuff we eat for dinner all the time. So yeah. we're going to share them with folks. Why not? What else we got to do? What else we got to do? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like everybody else is later around watching Netflix. Yeah, I want you to do your it. chicken and dumplings. That's, I, I do want to do my chicken and dumplings. That's going to be, that's one that, you know, I married you for a... your chicken and dumplings. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if you know that or not. <laughs> so if I can find a woman, some, she... if I can find a woman that can make chicken and dumplings, it just blows me away. That's the one I'm going after. You made them. I was like, this is it. <laughs> care what else she does as long as she makes some chicken and dumplings. <laughs> You chased me down. Chased you down. <laughs> that's when I, when I first saw you across the bar there in that smoky field room. I was like, that's a woman that can make some chicken and dumplings right there. I get that vibe. <laughs> get that chicken and dumplings vibe. <laughs> oh, dumplings? <laughs> oh, that's true. True story. All right. Malcolm, where can they find us? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you can find me on, at How to Barbecue Right on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. YouTube, and you can find Miss Southern Shell at Instagram. Instagram. Is it Miss Southern Shell? Yeah. Yeah. On Instagram. That's the only one she does, so don't mess with them. We do Twitter, too, sometimes, but not as good as we should. Yeah, we're terrible. I'm trying to get you on TikTok doing some of them. (laughs) 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 We'll look into that. But, yeah, is that all we got today, Shell? Yeah, that's it. Well, yeah, we appreciate y'all hanging out with us, and uh, 
Doesn't you know, it feel good to do a podcast? Yeah, it's kind of like therapy. It is. But uh, try that rib recipe for real. That's a good one. It and is. If, y'all got any, if you got any ideas, comments, questions, you want to see us do some delicious dinners or, you, or our take on something that you know that we, hey, we might have one for, y'all shout them at us. Send them to us. Uh, it, Post it on the Facebook page. Yeah. That's the best and way to follow us on Instagram. That. We're going to be doing Instagram stuff Saturday. You never know who we might go live with and check in on while we're all quarantined up. And we'll see y'all next time. <laughs>